Hello, everybody. Today on Inspirational Journeys, I am not doing a typical children's author, but my special guest, Marguerite Martin Gray, is a Celebrate Lit publishing author who I had the pleasure of editing the book that's coming out, the book that launches today as you're hearing this, and another book that's going to be launching in 2024. But we will get to all that soon. So first of all, welcome marguerite thank you so much it's good to be here it is it is good to have you here and it's also a, my pleasure to be a part of the celebrate lit editing team great we do a wonderful job i appreciate you thank you thank you so much <laughs> so why don't you introduce yourself to the group to the listeners and the viewers out there Hi, my name is Marguerite Gray, and I live in North Louisiana, and I was born in Louisiana, but I have lived in England, Texas, Mississippi, just, and we've circled back home. So I am married, and I have three rescue animals, two grown children, and two awesome grandsons. Uh, I love to travel, to garden, to hike, um, and a strange thing, I love to research I could just research all day long. So that's probably, probably was my calling. But anyway, I turned my research into to fiction, into books. I uh, travel anywhere I can as often as I can. And I also teach full-time Spanish and French online. So I am very busy, but it is good to be here and to answer your questions. Thank you so much. And it is such a blessing to have you. So how did you know when God called you to write? Well, I was I was very young and it wasn't writing as to be published, but I lived in England for two years when I was a preteen and I had the awesome chance, opportunity to travel. And I discovered castles and knights and princesses and horses. And so I would read and get my hands on to anything and everything. And I kept a little journal about uh, stories that I wanted to write. Okay, so this is an 11 year old writing down, you know, information, you know, maybe stories to write. So I kind of pursued that as I was a teenager, thought I wanted to write uh, children's literature because I love children's literature, but I um, put it aside. And I always had ideas, and but I had a family, and I taught in the public school system, all those things. So once the kids were gone, I went part-time, and in uh, two years, I wrote six full-length novels, not even thinking I'd ever be published, and they were just sitting there. But as a writer, I can't stop writing. So I was doing it no matter what the outcome, no matter what God wanted to do with them. And so um, I did that. But based on my writing is highly or greatly related to my love of reading and love of history. So I write mostly historical fiction, but I have, um, because of Celebrate Lit, I have gone into um, a contemporary. So that's that's out there. That's a little different. But as I had all these novels and they were all sitting there, I decided why not pursue the publishing? So they had to be greatly edited before I could even present them. So I presented the, the books to um, Celebrate Lit and Sandy graciously took them and we edited them. We cover all those things that you have to do to be published. So every year since 2018, I have published um, a book with Celebrate Lit. So I'm on my ninth, 10th novel with uh, with Celebrate Lit. So I does love that, it. That's the basic background. Does that include the Promise Me Christmas? Yes, it does include Promise Me Christmas. I think there are nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are nine, including Promise Me Christmas. And you got one coming out in four. One, two, January. three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then that would be nine. Yes, so nine. Yes, and I have one coming out in February. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, and yes. we're not going to have three. I have three a year. For the next three years, there are three novels a year. Oh, so, that's a lot. I Plus, know. with the research, <laughs> that's, that's a lot. Yes. That's yes, that a is lot. a lot. 
And I hope I get yes. to get more of that. Yes, I hope you all well, there's one I'm sending very soon. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah. And I so. just and I just edited the one that's coming out in February. So uh yes. did that last um couple months ago. Um so what okay, so let's talk about your writing process. I know you do research. Do you outline your your historical fiction before you um start writing or I definitely do. I am an organized um um, you're a plotter outlining then. person and I am a plotter Panster kind of gets to me if 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 my characters start doing something that I hadn't thought about it, it it's okay we go with it but I'm mostly um very organized very much a plotter so after my research with if it's a historical novel like the one that you um edited that I spent about three months um, researching. So that is a big chunk of what goes into that. And that usually is going to entail anywhere from 15 to 25 sources that I actually purchased. So my library is huge for the research area. And a lot of that is from my travels. So I choose a place where I have been and I've seen seen what's there and I've you know been to the castles, been to the gardens, all that kind of uh, stuff. So I use that as my visual. I can I can understand what's what's been going on. And then I will outline it. I'll take one month to outline. And I will go chapter to chapter what I want. So I know what the beginning is and the middle at the end. Now, the things in the middle can get all, you know, um, messed up because of what my characters want to do and say and where they want to go. And I just have to um, deal with that, of course. And then I, I go chapter by chapter and it ends up being those long novels, the one that you edited, 90,000 to 95,000 words. And then there's one more in that series that I'm finishing up right now. And then I'm going to, for a little while, stick with the 50,000, 30,000 word novels. And that's not as much research, but still a lot of research. So I, I, and I write pen and paper. So I'm not writing on the computer at all to begin with. So I just have these um, notebooks of all my writing. And so once I put it in to the computer, that's what I considered my my first edit. So I'm editing before I send it to my editor who edits it before we send it to Celebrate Lit. So it's been, you know, three times it's been gone over before we go to uh, my publisher. So that's then, my process. Right. And then you get more rounds of edits than it yes. possibly comes to me for developmental. Yes. Yes. And you get it. And then after you, I think there are, there are two more edits. So it is very, very well um edited yeah. you know by the time we get to the last edit it is just something that all of us have missed I mean I don't know how we miss it but it's amazing how with all those editors we still miss something very minor but something like a question mark or a quote or you know or something comma, or yeah or a comma or misspelling the uh, one even went to print misspelling the heroine's name oh my I don't gosh know how any of us missed that yes I don't know how we missed it we missed it but um, that's human era, you know. <laughs> right now, so. I want to pick your brain. I want to, uh, from from my, and this would be valuable for the listeners. But as far as the editing, the developmental editing process, did that book pattern that I created did that help you? Yes, it did. Now, let me tell you, when I first saw it, so I first saw it with, I guess, whispers of wisdom or Prom promise of purity. It's promise of purity. Um, I mean, not promise of purity. Um, promise, promise me Christmas. Me Christmas. Okay, promise yeah. me Christmas. Yes, promise me Christmas. And I had no idea what it was. <laughs> but of course, I had to do it. And Denise said, this is something, you know, we've done. And I didn't know you had done it, but I think you had done it with some other books. Yeah, with Celebrate Lit. And, and I didn't know that. So it's the first time that I saw it. Maybe that was the summer. I really don't remember. It kind of all goes together. But when I saw that, I thought, what in the world am I supposed to do with this? And how does, you know, how does it, help help the whole overall situation because it's already been to at that point it's already been to my editor my personal editor that I pay and he actually he he tries to catch the commas and the um all that kind of stuff he's proofreading it he's doing the line thing everything but he's not doing the um, developmental or anything like that so once I got into it though I mean when I got that first chapter done that you had you know written all that stuff for me it was like oh I get this 
I understand what she's saying and what I'm supposed to be doing now. I'm not supposed to be rewriting the whole thing. I'm not supposed to be deleting scenes, you know, necessarily, but I'm supposed to be thinking, you know, okay, maybe this will help this character. This will help the readers. This will, you know, keep people engaged. So wonderful job. And as it went on, especially like with the, well, the problem with the second book with Whispers of Wisdom is it has already, it had already been at the publisher for a year. Oh. So I didn't have that opportunity to, to put into practice what you had taught me that summer, because it had been, I mean, I hadn't seen it in a year. Okay. It has been sitting there at Celebrate Lit for that long. So when you got it, I hadn't seen it in a really long time. So hopefully if you get to do another one, hopefully I will go ahead and implement what you, I think you're going to suggest and, you know, make it stronger to begin with. So we'll see. So it's, you know, the pattern, I understand what you did, you're answering the questions, the who, what, when, where, I mean, I understand uh, why that's there and then the flow and anyway, so I, I enjoyed it. It, it. it was tough, but I enjoyed it. Well, I will explain how I came about that. And okay. some listeners may already know this, but see, I like to crochet and crocheting projects have patterns. Right. And my, my, I'm trying to, I'm working to formulate a method called the plot stitch method. So when I do the book pattern, it was basic based off of the book map, which okay. for those of you who want to learn how to use that in your own work. If you look at the magic words by Cheryl Klein, she has the, a, a book map template that, that I actually worked from. I didn't, use her template i actually created my own basic one and then i just tweaked it for each of the books i started tweaking it to ant to, to put in the most important questions and then i actually um greg bridgman did a has a self-editing checklist um that you can download from successful christian self-publishing.com i have to look that up but i think that's the website and um and I can also send that to you if you want to. I can send those documents to you, Marjorie. Thank you. you. Yes. Yeah. And so, and then I looked at, you know, the questions like that. Why is this important? Where's your conflict? Where's this, that, and the other? And that kind of, because I got stuck. I'm going to be honest. I got stuck because I'm like, okay, so how do I, how do I, um, wh how do, what questions do I need to ask here? Because I was doubting myself. I'm like, oh, I'm not good at this. And then I looked at those questions like, oh. Okay. Yes. And so that's how I did it. And I feel like instead of, and I've heard of, and I know there are a lot of editors who write revision letters, but I felt like God was leading me to, to pattern the book this way because a revision letter gives you basically overall. And I've actually tried writing a revision letter with, with a friend of mine and then and my first um, celebrate lit author who had done uh, developmentals for. And and I'm like, no, that, that's not going to work. So I actually did the book pattern and I asked Denise if I could, if I could try that. And she said, yeah, let's see, let's see how that works. And so that actually should, helps me to figure out big picture where the problems are. And it also helps you to, to, you know, see what I found and then think about the questions I ask and then consider whether, you know, what works and then consider what suggestions. And if I can, I'll give you, you know, options. And then you you right. think about it, pray about it, and keep going. That's why I do it that way. That's why I like that yes. do that style of developmental editing. I'm fairly new at it, but I'm learning not only to do. I'm right. I write children's books, but I not only give you got y'all advice, but I also take the advice I give y'all and implement. And I'm starting to implement it in my own writing. Right. So yes, and that's what I will do from going from your pattern editing. That's what I have noticed I have done on this next novel. It's just like, okay, I've got to, you know, these people can't be alone again. You know, <laughs> I mean, all those things. That, right, because you know, like, I'm oh, like, oh, this is not. Just, just, yeah, I, and so, thinking... so we changed those things. But I, I will notice that I will say that I didn't change everything that you suggested because a lot, lots of times you would suggest something but then you would also give a very positive thing. And so it'd be maybe I needed to, you know, change a sentence or two, but your positive input made me think that, okay, you know, this is this is good here, good scene, 
but I need to just tweak it just a little bit. So um, very, very few times did I just throw everything out, you know, throw everything out. But I did um, take and, advice. And I and I appreciate that. And I appreciate that feedback because sometimes I wonder if I'm if my style is effective. And I do appreciate that 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 positive feedback. I like to encourage where I can, but if I see something that that definitely doesn't look like it's working, or if I mm -hmm. see that something's missing, I'm gonna point it out. Because yes. I want I because um and like I've been saying, you know, our books are our our fruit of the spirit. If you look at John 15, 15 verse five. I am the vine, you are the branches. And God showed me that picture of a tree with branches. And on the end of the branches was our books. And that was for um, authors. Right. That are, and that's why I, I do what I do. Because not only do I want my, 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 my writing to be the best quality and to give God glory. Um, I also want y'all to have that same, you know, to I want your books to I, I, I want to see you your book succeed and I'm you know I'm happy to to help where I can yes and you do a very good job appreciate it and I, I appreciate the feedback too yeah. so what was the inspiration behind promise me Christmas I almost called it keeping Christmas Keeping Christmas, because I have that one right here, too. So Keeping Christmas was last year. And I think that's where Denise said that you helped out. But did you help with the Keeping Christmas? No. Um. No, you didn't. Or, uh -uh. That was the Christmas anthology. Okay. Right. Um, that was a, I yeah, I did. That. Yes, I did. I did help with that. I, I don't you know did. if it was your. I don't know. If, I don't remember which no, one. No, I think she said some. Yeah, she said some because I didn't get anything from you. So probably it wasn't. If no. it was, you know. Anyway, so uh, yes, Keeping Christmas was an anthology last year. The right. inspiration for Promise Me Christmas is it's a novella, so it is shorter. And it is the continuation of the Revolutionary Faith series, which is a series of five books that follow the Lester Jett family in Charleston, follows them through the war. So it is a 10-year period from 1772 to 1782. What People don't realize with authors, okay, when somebody finishes reading, let's say book five, you know, you the, the reader sometimes thinks, well, you know, what happened to those characters? Are the characters all dead? Are the, you know, what do the characters do with their lives from now on? But as an author, I know exactly what all those characters ended up doing, whether I write another book about them or not. So what Promise Me Christmas is, is it takes, um, it takes a, a couple of characters from from the books, from the earlier books, and you know they have a relationship where they're you know that you know they're dating or they're you know courting or something, and all the conflict are coming out of out of a war and things like that. So the main characters are actually two um, characters who are going to have some kind of love interest, and then the secondary characters are actually the primary characters in the first five books. So we still have Elizabeth and Louis Lester Jett. So everything's still tied to them. So on that cover, the, the lady there is actually Elizabeth Lester Jett. And she goes on, you know, she ends up having 10 children eventually. I know that. Reader doesn't know that. But her life goes on, as do all these characters. So in this one, um, I took a, a rebel um, brother, her brother, who had um, started out as a um, red coat, as a British soldier. And he, in the middle, decided, oh, I'm going to switch sides. I'm going to be a patriot, and I'm going to be a spy. So he does that, but he's walking around with all the, the guilt of the first two years where he didn't pick the right side. And so he is carrying that burden. And um, there's a love interest from before but, you know, can she forgive him for all that? So basically it takes those two characters and um, puts them in situations where they have to decide uh, what are we going to do here? You know, do we, do we split? Do we you know, let it go? What do we do? And so the ones for the next two years will take two different people and we'll have, a, um, you know, different scenarios there. So that's where that comes from. It's inspired totally by revolutionary faith. And I have loved doing it because I know my characters are still alive. So so there they are. Wow, that is so. I know. I, 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 as an author, I, I myself, I feel that. And the characters do talk to you, and they do stay with you. Yes. So, 
are you I know you said when you were younger you started writing you 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 started writing children ideas for children's stories and you love children's yes. are you gonna try to do some of that children's work I um I am not I really really thought about it I probably should be doing some YA some um young adult but children's um I think it just takes a special gift that I don't have that you have that others have and Thank I'm, you. I'm so thankful that so thankful that y'all are there because I I still buy children's books. I mean, I have shelves in here. I mean, I just keep buying books and then I'll buy them for my grandsons. And I guess I'll just have this huge library of children's books and I've kept all my children's books. Um, so the only, the I, I'm a teacher too. And that's an area, elementary is a t an area that I would never teach, if that makes any sense. Preschool, yeah. kindergarten, elementary, I'm just not called to do that. God placed me in secondary school for a reason. And so if I were to write something, it would be young adult. So, um, but I support children's books 100%. And okay. you can also take my ideas at, that I wrote down when I lived in England. I can also take those ideas and turn them into a YA or a an adult book. Oh, yeah. So yeah. the ideas are still there, you know. Yeah, but definitely. Anyway, yes. Yeah. So do you have any, anything, are there any tips and takeaways that you want or anything you want the listeners to walk away with today from this interview? Well, um, if you are an aspiring author, keep on writing. Um, don't worry about ever being published. That That's a God thing and pursue it, you know, if you want to, but if you're a writer, just keep on writing. And for readers, I am, first of all, a reader. I am not, first of all, an author, writer. I am a reader and I will never stop reading. So um, keep on reading. Try the different genres. I love um, historical Christian fiction, but I am up to reading contemporary and crossing over into time travel and things like that. I do tend to probably 80% of what I read is going to be Christian I do read some other things that aren't, you know, uh, very bad or anything like that, but I do cross over and I have some authors that I, I love to read in, um, you know, when you cross over into the um, secular world. Okay. But I'm going to keep my books into the, in, in the Christians. So I just read and, you know, I will try to read anything. And I would you know, suggest that don't just think, you know, because it's not historical Christian, that it's not a good book or that it's not, you know, by an author, the only author that you read, you know, try other authors. I find new authors all the time, fall in love with them, support them. I mean, I buy their books. I, you know, go to their websites and I, I would suggest if you find an author you like, or you want to just try on, go to the website. All the books are there. Everything about that person is there and websites and newsletters are awesome. So that's my suggestion. Well, thank you so much. Yes, I I, I do have, if you like children's fantasy, I do have a book to suggest. Um, get the King of Realms uh, series by Britt Asher. Okay, I'm going to write it down right now. Okay, yep. Britt Asher. Okay. Yes, she, I will I'm going to have her, I'm going to have her on the show in a, in a couple of weeks. So in, in right. a few weeks. So that's going to be, that's going to be awesome. So yeah. where can people find you online if they want to connect with you? Okay. They can go to Facebook, Marguerite Martin Gray, or just Marguerite Gray. I'm there and I will accept or uh, my website, which is just my name, Marguerite Martin Um, I'm on Instagram everywhere. Love Instagram, one of my favorite, and Goodreads. Goodreads is actually the top. If I had to choose just one social media, I would choose Goodreads. So I find books to read. I find, you know, all these things about authors. So Goodreads, Instagram, and um, Facebook, and, of course, my website. So I'm out there, Pinterest, I mean, anything. Just put my name in there, and it'll it'll come up. So. Okay. Do you have a Bible verse that you would like to share with us before we close? Um, Bible verse. Um, I would say, um, oh gosh, there's so many. I know, right? <laughs> um, right. I mean, I'm trying to think, you know, what would my favorite be without, um, looking up, um, probably something from, um, Isaiah or Jeremiah, um, 
actually my books are are actually have something to do that it's uh, hold me close let your love surround me bring me near and draw me to your side and then um the on wings of eagles you know all those those kind of verses so i i keep those i keep those close and i know that god has a plan and um so that's kind of the verses i try to stick you know with positive ones that are going to get me through strength things like that so right yes so is there anything else on your heart that 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 you would like to say before we close in prayer well um not really i mean i'm just glad to be here and i'm thankful for you and all that you do and i just thank you you need to Keep on this positive road and helping authors. We we really appreciate it. We really well, do. I thank you so much, yes. and I appreciate the positive feedback too. So, would you do me the honor of closing us out in prayer? I would love to. Father God, I thank you so much for this time that we can get together and we can talk about things that might seem a little um, um, not unworldly, but just just reading and writing and things, but realize, realizing that we have a message and we can get that message out to people through through fiction, through books, through children's, young adult, adult books. And I thank you for the ability to read and the ability to write and the ability to um, put down ideas that we can share with other people. Now, bless Anne and her ministry and all that she she does and that she writes and, and every listener who is here that you will just... Give us strength and the uh, the energy to complete what you have set before us, the plans that you have for us, and help us to see those as you direct us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we challenge you today to go out there and read to get inspired, write something inspiring, and share your creation with the world. For when you've touched one life, you've touched thousands. Thanks for joining us on Inspirational Journeys today, everybody. And remember, your story matters. Have a blessed day.